Hey guys, it's Aries here, and today for the first ever episode of Law Class Replay Review, I want to go over a game submitted by the Law Class user Bob Fevel, and it is a Browns 4 game in which he played Lasandra. I'm going to focus on a few things that Bob could have done to potentially win this game, as well as what he should do to improve his overall gameplay. So the first suggestion I have of Hope is to come up with a game plan. So pretty much throughout the game, I felt that Volp was very reactive and didn't really have sense of a direction or a strategy. And coming up with a game plan is simply just analyzing the enemy team comp against yours and then just think on you know what you need to do, what you need to shut down, what you need to avoid or to help your team win. And having a plan and a strategy is really going to enhance your chances of winning. So to effectively analyze a game plan, I would first just you know, look at the team comp. I would realize that my team comp, in which we have uh, Irelia, Lissandra, and Skarner, overall, Volp's team comp is just significantly better than the enemy team comp in almost every aspect of the game. The only thing that we're really allow the enemy team to win is they play significantly better and get really fed early or if they split push out rotate our team because Zed and Master E are very good at pushing turrets and split pushing so how I would devise a game plan towards that is first of all Lissandra is laning against Zed and in this lane Lissandra should be able to have an edge because of her range as well as she can play really aggressive and not get punished for it because the enemy jungler is a master E and you can always get away with your E if you reserve it for the gank as well as even in the event which they get close to you you always have a W to snare them and then get away safely so essentially you can play very aggressive in this matchup and not really get punished for it for this reason, you should play aggressive early, pressure the minion wave to the against uh, Zed, and then rotate towards top. Now, I, I would select top mainly because the top Lee Sin doesn't have flash, and with the gap closers of Lissandra and Aurelia, it'll be an easy kill. Additionally, you would want the Aurelia to get fed because the fed Aurelia can split push by herself as well and push up the minion wave and counter the uh, split push by the enemy team. And the other part is, unless the Caitlyn is a very good player and you know for sure, I would be wary of trying to get this Caitlyn fed in this particular game just because you have a Master E, a Zed, and an AD lead enemy team in which if the Caitlyn somehow missed positions, doesn't matter how fed she is, she's still gonna get one shot. So the second thing I want to talk about for Volp in this game is really the build. And to start off, here are the runes and masteries, the skill orders, and then itemization choices. And you know the runes and masteries can definitely be optimized. And you should spend five minutes and watch the uh, Cloud9 Boss Lissandra video. So the runes and masteries wouldn't have made a significant difference this game. It would have helped, but it's not going to be that big of a factor. But on the other side, Building a Rod of Ages was a critical mistake as Lissandra because you don't want ROA on Lissandra because Lissandra benefits a lot more with Morello as the first item. Mainly because the cooldown reduction allows you to spam your ult a lot faster as well as having more Qs and then other skills available throughout the team fight. And after Morello's, you want to rush Zhanya's as soon as possible because what makes Lissandra strong is her ulti combined with Zhanya's. It gives her 5 seconds of invulnerability, which means that she's going to be very very annoying in a team fight, and she has plenty of CC and AoE damage. And having HP isn't really going to help Lissandra become a better team fight champion. As you wonder why Morello is better than Rod of Ages on Lissandra, the most obvious one is that it would have netted you about 3 or 4 more ultis this game, and potentially 5 more ultis mid game if you got blue buff. So the math works out like this. At level 11, Lissandra's ulti is 105 seconds base cooldown with a 5% cooldown reduction from Masteries. Lissandra's ulti is 99.75 seconds. With 20% additional cooldown reduction, the ulti is 78.75 seconds. Which means that if 
you build it as a first item up to 30 minutes which is about like 16 minutes of time you would have netted about three or four more ultis depending on whether or not you got blue buff or you built fiendish codex and that would have made a big difference throughout this game especially how big lasandra's ulti is this in this game given that the enemy team is very vulnerable against a hard CC. And additionally, the uh, Grievous Wound passive would have made a pretty significant difference when it comes to attacking Master E. So the third suggestion I had is, really if you want to win in solo queue, you need to know your champion. As for this particular matchup, it seems that you didn't really know how to play Lassandra fully. Granted, there were mechanical errors here and there. That's not really the big point. First of all, you were bullied by Zed in the early levels, which shouldn't happen. And the only way for you to really win this lane is to out-pressure Zed. Because once you're pressured on the turret, you're forced to CS with your abilities and spam your skills. Soon your oom, um, once you're oom, um, you're not really able to CS well. And then the CS lead really snowballs, which you were down about 20 CS. But if you played aggressively and push out the minion wave and try to hit level 2 first, then you have the minion wave advantage. And in that case, you can continue to bully Zed against his turret. And the best part about this game, as I talked earlier in the game plan, is the enemy jungler is Master E and your Lissandra. They don't have any hard CC, and then the only burst that uh, Zed really have is uh, at level 6. So given this, if you save your E, and W for escapes and then just poke with Q and then stay out of range from Zed's shadows, then you'll be fine. You'll just be able to get away every time Master E comes to gank, even if he does a really good alpha strike when you E and then gets you in melee range, you can just W and snare Master E while getting away to your turret. So ultimately, it's very hard for you to die as Lassandra if you can play her in this matchup you would have gained a lot more advantages if you played aggressive as opposed to being passive and getting pushed up against turret. So over here, I want to showcase a specific example of how you would have turned the outcome of this fight if you knew how to play the champion better. In this case, you casted your ultimate same time as you casted your W. So what that means is you wasted one full second duration or even more of CC duration by doing that. What you could have done is first ultimate or first W, D, Z, and then chain the CC afterwards to add the CCs. Whereas by casting them together, you just wasted one second of CC. And in this particular case, by being able to CC the Z for an additional one more second, it would have allowed Skarner to hit one more skill, which allowed him to apply passive stacks. And then it was already at two stacks. If it hits three, it means that Z would have been stunned for an additional 0.5 seconds. Another way you could have played this fight is really just wait and cast your ultimate as uh, Zed ultis you and when the death mark is about to pop because if you were able to negate the damage of the death mark you would have been in this team fight for much longer and the longer you were in the team fight you would have done more damage because Q cooldown is relatively short at the same time as a 2v1 and Skarner is applying damage over time and this would have really helped you win this team fight and get you a kill or an assist as a opposed to dying and then really giving Zed the edge in this 1v2. Knowing this champion would have definitely improved your chances of winning this game, but at the same time, the reason why you lost this game wasn't because of your mechanical flaws. Everyone have mechanical flaws and it's really easy to point them out as we watch these replays and quite frankly they are pretty pointless. I can point them out, anyone can point them out as someone didn't land a skill shot or missed a stun or got hit by a stun. But at the same time, the thing that you should really notice as it was your own fault was the critical mistake you made at 29 minute mark. And the fourth suggestion I have for you is just improve your focus. And you need better focus in the games because at the 29 minute mark, you lost focus. And I think something happened in real life that led to your you know, short period of AFK followed by you going top lane for no particular reason and then start doing double golems which is a waste of time. As you were mindlessly killing the double golems, your teammates were fighting bot lane and to be honest, even if they died in this particular team fight, it would have been okay, 
But the problem was that you should have been at mid. There was no one defending that mid turret. And as I mentioned earlier, you want to be very wary of uh, split push as well as just uh, sieging powers of Master E and Zed. In this particular case, Master E was able just to get go down mid and get a free inhibitor turret and then an inhibitor afterwards. This essentially costed you the game because what ended up happening is because you lost pressure by super minions coming down, it also snowballed into a bottling inhibitor which resulted in you being stuck at your base most of the time. Even though you were able to win team fights towards the end of the game, you couldn't do anything afterwards because your base was flooded with super minions and that essentially cost you the game because when the enemy team won just one team fight, they were able to end with a victory. So in conclusion, you see how something so small that you possibly may overlooked because you were distracted ended up costing you the game. Even though you were doing well the whole game and then you were one of the contributing factors to why your team was in the game, you were also the reason that handed the game away. Now after the game review, I feel that there's a lot of things that you did well and there's a few tweaks that you can do beginning with a, a better build on certain champions. So overall, I think your goal of achieving gold this season is definitely possible. So keep fighting, keep playing. Thanks for sending your replay in. It was a pleasure watching it. Hope you learned something from this. And if you have any questions, you can tweet me at at AriesKG. Thanks, guys. And be sure to check out other videos at lawclass.com.